Thank you, ODC organizers, for putting this together. Great to see a lot of interested folks here uh, and a few friends who we have interacted over the last few years. Uh, so it gives me pleasure to uh, talk about uh, a very contemporary act that's happening now. Uh, my name is Srila Pavishetti, and I'm the CEO of the Center for Public Policy, I am Bangalore. Today I'm wearing a different hat, uh, that's of the Open Governance India portal, which we have been uh, uh, trying to get started in the last few weeks with friends here. Uh, so firstly, let's begin with uh, why open data, why a particular kind of open data. And I think it's about the need for better governance, and I think all of us think that we can do something about it. And just going back to a famous definition at Wikipedia, it says, uh, what is open source governance? It says, let's take the philosophies of open source, open content, and democratic principles and see, can we make it better? Can we make the governance better? Can each one of us play our role better? And also in terms of uh, creation of policy, being as similar to a document, and legislation being democratically open to people. Right? So at this point of time, I would like to just begin with a with something to be at the back of our mind, and it's a need for humility. Something said a few decades ago, which said, uh, wisdom enough to leech us off all our weak gills is daily spun, but there exists no loom to weave it into a fabric. So as some of the speakers were trying to say earlier, let's try and evolve the loom rather than say that this is the loom. Okay. So as long as we keep that in our mind, maybe we'll have better success. And the reality of governance today, you know, I mean, we have seen the Terry Square in Egypt. We've also seen a similar movement in the USA, which talks of spreading democracy. And even there itself, there is a very massive movement which says the 99% 99 99 will not be silent. And there's also a very interesting uh, other picture, which I couldn't put for the short of space, which said, uh, I am the 99% and I don't have a lobbyist. Will you listen to me? I think we need to look at a different find, different kind of governance today. Uh, in India, we haven't been far behind. We had our own uh, spring, and uh, uh, in one of the one of the uh, way a particular person chronicled this moment, he said, "The nation fights to end corruption." Okay. And uh, a lot of people came together. A lot of brainstorming happened, and two very interesting ideas came out. One was the need for General Lokpal Bill, the second is the Citizens Charter. And uh, maybe Citizens Charter hasn't got as much media coverage as the General Lokpal Bill, because General Lokpal Bill is an easy prescription to think that somebody will come and change the world. Uh, let's look at Citizens Charter. And even before that, uh, let's go back and see what are we doing in our own country in terms of engaging with people, various stakeholders. Uh, there was a joint bill drafting committee where Anna Hazare and uh, some legal luminaries from the government took part, draft their bill. Uh, the government has been talking to various think tanks, uh, which there are some of them in the room today. That people's collective, MKS, as it started as a people's movement, today finds place in the National Advisory Board, Nat National Advisory Committee. Anna Roy speaks on various issues, some also get legislated. The NREGA is a very, very good example. And the learning in all these experiments have been that uh, you need to be patient, you need to be engaged, and there is a possibility of long-lasting outcome. And there was also a political change in Karnataka, and the current chief minister said, uh, development is a mantra of our government. He says that, I pledge to consolidate the achievements made so far, you know, which achievements he was referring to. But nevertheless, he also on a positive note said that to give a new dimension to administration and provide more impetus to development. The budget which happened a couple of days ago talks about uh, the scheme should reach the beneficiaries in time. So this is chapter being reaffirmed here. And the achieve development centric and transparent administration with no scope for red tape. Uh, good statements, but is it being forwarded in policy? Yes, the Canada Guarantee of Services to Citizens Act which was uh, passed by the legislation, legislature at the end of last year, came into force from March 1st. Uh, the pilot phase where 151 services from 11 different departments uh, is now available in a time-bound manner. Okay. 
and it's being implemented in four talukas. And uh, as many of you know, there are four revenue divisions in Karnataka. One in each has been selected, along with BBMP. The Central Taxes Department, which uh, you will see a little later, is very important in a different way, uh, has come in voluntarily and has started implementing across the state. And April 2nd, it will be applicable to the whole state of Karnataka. Uh, what did we do at the Center for Public Policy at IIM Bangalore? We work with different governments, trying to help them solve different challenges. And uh, when this act was being formed about uh, eight weeks ago, they came to us and said, can we work on this and can we make this better? So we said, okay, fine, let's get started. So they asked us to join consultations with four leading departments who were part of uh, KGSC. And it was a uh, very interesting conversation. There were lower bureaucracy, uh, lower bureaucracy, middle bureaucracy, and some senior bureaucrats in the room. The discussions, the first five minutes were about the provisions of the act. The next of the rest of the session was about saying who will get blamed for not delivery of services. And I think we should be very, very uh, aware of the fact as. Uh, then uh, we were talking in the morning, telling, uh, well, sometimes the lower bureaucrat may not have, not be empowered enough to really make the change. So why put the gun on his head? So there were a lot of discussions, then at last some kind of a uh, mechanism was evolved, and then they said, okay, let's look at a continuous process rather than just saying it as a single switch that will make the lower, lower bureaucracy work. Uh, we then sent a about 12, 12 recommendations, which I wrote after the four consultations, and sent it to the government, the principal secretary. And uh, what happened was surprising. In two minutes, I saw that it was replied to all with a whole bunch of guys who were work, who were working with her to implement the act. And she said we should act on each one of them. I was like, okay. I thought you go into the dustbin. Should I even write for half an hour my recommendations? And that was interesting, and that gave me a lot of hope and said. Maybe somebody is listening. Maybe somebody has a reason to listen. Right? Often in our engagement with the government, we need to try and understand what is his reason to listen to us. Right? Many people may want to listen, many people may want to act. And in this case, she was willing to act on certain parts of it. And we said, let's go with it. Then uh, request came one after the other. They said, uh, what, what is the public perception of this? How do we engage with public? How do we get a view of the public out of it? There was a consultative window, but as usual, very few responses were coming to the consultative window. So we said, okay, let's look, let's try and reach out to the media. So one evening at 6.30, the call comes and says, tomorrow can you come to an all India radio talk show that happens at 12.30. I was like, okay, right? I mean, everybody's tomorrow is planned. It's not unplanned, but we reshuffled it and we were able to be there. And very interesting one hour conversation where many people logged in, they spoke, they said what they would like to see in the act. And uh, they started the point, you know, there is a specific provision of the act, but the way citizens get back to the government is saying that, uh, well, I'll not look through the act, I'll want to talk about 20 other different things, right? So there is, there is, whenever, you should be aware of that noise that happens, right? The government comes with a specific proposal, but the, gov but the people are willing to talk about separate things, right? Somewhere you will have to take the signal from that, from that interaction and feed it back into the act. Because even this, this principal secretary is not, will not be able to make changes to the other services which are not in the act. So that's a reality. So we, should, we should kind of smoothen that process. Uh, and there was a contest, uh, the, the logo, the slogan, the title, everything was from the public. Uh, then there came a point wherein they said, okay, how do we monitor? How do we put this, put the IT system in and how do we monitor? Uh, again, there were a lot of back and forth in this report, that report, who will see it, who will not see it. Then somewhere we were able to influence and say, you know, why restrict it, let everybody see it. And somewhere NIC also was happy to do it and we weren't wondering why. They were still figuring out their uh, role-based security and all of it. So they said, okay, opening it to all is an easy thing for us. So they said, bang, so let's put it in the open door. So you can, you can make some small wins like this when when uh, you are in a consultative process with the government. And uh, that, I think, for all of us in the room, is a good opportunity to be able to see data as it happens and to see the progress as it happens. Then we realized that the just the department needed a couple of people to help them with inter 
interfacing with NIC and other vendors, so we brought in two people. And again, there. Yeah. Question. yeah. Um, so uh, you, you mentioned um, people discuss, people come back with feedback about something else, but yeah. the, top, the topic, I mean, the act is about something else, right? So, um, have you seen any interest in um, in organizing uh, documents like those in a more semantic fashion, where you would maybe pick a point and then discuss the point in a in in lengthy detail? I mean, technology is very easy around that topic. We could try that. I mean, we have the logs from SMSs that we got, and those SMS yeah, logs. After can... the fact, but what if the discussion could be brought to the document itself, where the document then becomes part of a conversation? where you could pick a point and say, okay, I'm going to discuss in 10 comments this one point. Uh, that's, it's a little difficult, and I think uh, what happens is uh, uh, the government runs at a very fast pace. You should understand that, you know, I mean, they, they open it up for two weeks concentrating process, and then for anybody to be able to parse it and, and drive meaning into something that seems irrelevant to the particular act in question, and drive it back in is a little bit difficult, right? And uh, at least, luckily, you know, uh, some of us at CP have been talking about opening the policy, pro pro policy making itself to public, and that's the reason why we saw, okay, fine, it makes sense for us to push and make the reports being made to public a lot more valuable than that. And that's also a consultative process output where uh, somebody, somebody in the system felt we can make it open, and it was made open. I understand, but but that fast response mechanisms is what we need to build as open data community here, as to saying, okay, can we build a consultative platform? Right? I'll put the act. Can I crowdsource consultative solutions to it? Right? And somebody has to do this for the government. The government will not do it. So the government will only say, okay, this is what we do with KGS. Let me throw it out. Right? So I think I think that's the bandwidth issue. Right? And and somewhere when the process. When, when fortunately some doors open, we will have to capitalize on that. And that's where we could all get together and do it. Uh, and then uh, here's the status, one lakh requests in just four taluks. And of course, the commercial taxes department, as you can see, is the, is the king here with 8,000 requests there, out of one lakh. Spread across 11 departments. Um, then here is something that we are working with the government. And I would like to hear from you guys uh, Either here or offline about what else could go into this thing. So take a look at the take a look at the act and then see what else we could do. So we said, okay, as uh, you could see in the previous report, right? They just gave us some five reports, and then you know, I can't I can't drill through it. I can't make sense out of it. Right? You're giving me some some numbers. You're throwing some numbers at to me, but then I don't know the health of the system, right? The first thing at least I want to have visibility is the health of uh, is a is the health of the system and how can I know the health of the system? I can't know from this. So I said, okay, give me raw data, and they said, what do you mean by raw data? <laughs> so then I said, okay, let me dub myself down, and then I gave them a simple simple report request, which you see at the end of the presentation, containing only about seven or eight columns. I said, itna de do, baaki I'll try and figure out how to make sense out, right? Next is uh, what you saw was not machine readable. You know, I mean, at least luckily it's neatly formatted HTML. Uh, somewhere, somewhere you can pick it up, but some, some you need to spend time to pass it out. The next is uh, some we, in, in the consultations. It's very important to attend these consultative discussions with the departments. So there was this disability certificate that was supposed to be given by the health department. All right, and then they said, uh, but actually the in in one case. The Women and Child Development Department was also involved. So there was this back and forth of saying that you know you will not have meetings in the right time. I will not be able to deliver it by this time, and all that stuff. So government, in its own, uh, in the last few years, it has made the delivery of services very complex. It's, it's involved NGOs somewhere and said, okay, you do this part. Uh, NGOs don't carry laptops and go to the field. The laptops and computers are in the office, so you can't plug an IT solution for this. Right? So there are all those complexities. So we should try and allow as much complexity as possible. Okay, ten more minutes. So that's good. Um, uh, then the next thing that we said is let's let's look at a kaizening system. Let's try and find out uh, whenever a default happens, which means the default here is defined as uh, somebody not getting a service in the stipulated number of days. 
Okay. If he has a reason to reject it, he has to clearly specify the reason to reject it. It can't just say he, I mean, I didn't like the face of the guy or the guy didn't give me 500 bucks and hence I'm not passing it. Glad to say, okay, he did not give me the birth certificate of that guy and hence I can't force a ahead. Right? So there should be valid justification. Let's talk about, I mean, in this 151 services, there are some very interesting services like uh, water connection in some days. Right? We all know water connection in seven days was not something that any one of us in the room had got it. Right? How will the government deliver it just because this act has been passed? Right? So we'll have to be a little more uh, uh, sensitive to make the changes slow, but gradual and sure process. Uh, next, uh, then we said, okay, look at preventive and corrective actions. Let's look at systematic simplification. Then the next thing that we said was, uh, Will you stop at 151? I mean, for whatever reason you chose to do 151, which is great. Even Bihar, which is another uh, uh, success story here in the citizen starter, has 51 services and we are doing three times as much. So that's good, but then what happens after? So they said we are open to do as many more services in due course of time, which is good. So that, that again falls into the public domain. Then can we put pressure and make that 151 become whatever number in due course of time, right? Then we said that we need to bring in various stakeholders for regular consultations, not just in Bangalore, but in Bihar, Gulbarga, and wherever uh, we see a lot of defaults, right? Uh, it, these, are, these are symptoms of something not being right. And can we make this little more participatory? And the government is now saying, yes, I think we can, and hopefully that should happen in the next few days. Then uh, again, you know, we said uh, open data, and I you know I think we said uh, we should at least be able to put it at some place if we don't get machine readable formats on the on the Karnataka Guarantee of Services Act. And they seem to be open to that, so we just have to sort it out and see when I can get the report that I'm asking for. <coughs> and at this point of time, we were while we were uh, juggling this and we thought, uh, can we do a, a significant move towards open governance and how can we do it? And there was another reason with this. At Center for Public Policy, we have been working on various uh, policy issues at a very large scale, right? We collected some data ourselves, we collected some data from NSSO and other places. And we said, uh, every time we do some dumb steps again and again, just because the source data is, is in a locked format. And I'm sure Sumandra will be able to talk more about NSSO data, right? If you have to work with NSSO data, it's, it's trouble. And every time for every research, you don't have to do the same thing. Right? So we said, okay, can we do some open source stuff there? Yeah. Then next thing was like, you know, why just open it up at CPP? Can you open it up outside? But then uh, technology also needs a lot of investment of time, effort. And then um, at that point of time, we went with another company, which was also working on the data issues called Noma. So they also came and they said, okay, let's try starting something small and let's agile, iterate, and then see where we go with this process. And uh, in less than two to three weeks is uh, what you see the open gardens in their portal. And uh, currently what we have done is we pre-populated the data from uh, three different data sources. And one of them is the Minister of Statistics and Program Implementation, which I think is still headed by the Prime Minister. And uh, we have also noted, is moved to somebody, the one is PI. Yeah, I think it's still it. Then, of course, there is a preliminary KGSC data that we have been able to upload. And we are also working on trying to make sense of NSSO data. And over the next few weeks, we might upload some stuff into it. Um, and again, you know, I mean, NSSO data is rich with time series data. It's just that we have to apply our mind to read the time series well. I was reading a report by Ravi Srivastava from NCEUS about migraine data, and I think somebody was mentioning migraine data in the morning today. It's very complex. There are data sets where you get contradictory results, right? And then, you know, so you need to you need to be invested in, the, in that much of time to get some sense out of it, especially on migration. <laughs> so here are a couple of uh, uh, data that we have put, it, put on Open Governance India or Tuvachi. It's in alpha stage, so feel, please feel free to get onto it, uh, log in, and see see if any of these data sets are of your use. So what's the URL? Uh, OpenGovernanceIndia.org. It's in the previous slide. Yeah, it's also in the previous slide. OpenGovernanceIndia.org. Yeah. 
one question I have is when I do represent an academic institution, is like, have you partnered with any of the academic institutions to be able to drive some of this initiative? And yeah. Give data as well? Yes, so the Center for Public Policy is located in IIM Bangalore. So we have that much amount of thing existing with us. But at the same time, you know, we want to make this, uh, we, are, we are open for partnerships with anyone who want to come in, put, put a set of complementary data and take something out of it. Right? And so, so that's, we are very, I mean, the idea is we are trying to solve our own problem. I mean, a couple of months ago, I was trying, to, I was teaching at National Institute of Design on data visualization, and it was so tough to get uh, 25 data sets for India, which you could represent on a map, uh, right? And and that's that's the state of ability to ability to take and engage with government data today. So I think we thought it will solve it for uh, for that particular problem point. And if that's a problem point, it's problem point not just for CPT but for everybody else. And that's the reason it's a it's a open platform. It depends, we'll have to initiate that conversation. But at the same time, what I think that you guys should start doing at your own level is of saying, what form of this data that I have is shareable in the open platform? Doesn't matter, right? Doesn't matter, right? I mean, so, Kannada to English is a technology problem, so that will be solved by other things. But uh, what's important is like NSSO data <coughs> is not publicly shareable, but aggregates of NSSO data are shareable, right? So, our first project is of aggregating data out of NSSO and making it reusable in certain way. Right? So start looking at this, you know, I mean, be it OGI, be it, I mean, there are hundreds of platforms out there, which are a platform. Try to make it aggregate and shareable. And uh, I mean, the, the by default inclination for us is to be, um, you know, the kind of licensing where we, where attribution is a must, right? You are free to reuse the data, republish the data and all. I mean, yeah, okay. Two or three things. Uh, just let me just quickly finish a couple of slides and then I'll come back. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Uh, so four data sets of uh, KGSC that's over there, and uh, then again, you know, I mean, this uh, this platform gives you some out of the box uh, visualizations that you could do, and these are a couple of them. So Bellary and Bangalore is just very easy to do. We have parameterized uh, capability where you, the moment you create uh, one particular column as a dimension, you can then say drop down Bangalore, Bellary, everything becomes out of. Right. So even that will get that will evolve with time and we can make it better. Then this is something the regular Excel pie chart that I pulled out from the latest data. That was last week's data, this this week's data. And if you see eighty thousand requests are from the commercial taxes department, which is running statewide <coughs> the whole operations. And then I just put it out and then saw the rest of the data. Then you see that uh, the urban development department. See, no, I think it's a transport department which has about eleven thousand requests and about 80% of them have already been solved. So which means that government does a lot of work, right? So we need to see where it's not working the right way, right? Or whom it's working for and whom it's not working. Right? And this we will know only with a little more, uh, uh, what do you call, inquiry. And here is uh, the simple Excel sheet that I shared with them. This is trying to ask them simple thing. So every request now with these 151 services will come with a 15 digit unique number. Okay, uh, so what I want to know with each unique number is saying what was the service requested out of the 151. The next is which location did you request it in? Okay. The third is who was the particular officer? I thought I'll get a lot of flack for this. Right. I'll be telling what the hell, why the hell do you need to know which officer it is? Okay, then the next is status, the date requested on, date due on, and date of completion. And if it's in the open state, of course, there's no date of completion. And if rejected, what's the reason? Yeah, so that's pretty much that I thought, you know, the first level of data that I should put in the public domain for people to take some, com to make some comment on it, saying that, you know, how is it going, how is it not going. And this is some URLs, and uh, at this point of time, I'm open to questions. Okay.
Yeah. So two, three things. So yeah. One, I really like the fact that you're working with the government and not just blaming the government, yeah. which is very exemplary. Uh, second of all, uh, if you're still open to suggestions about the Venus Reserve Act, there's more of a curiosity. Uh, what is the uh, what is the grievance redress mechanism in the Act? How how if, if the government doesn't provide it within seven to ten days, what are what are the provisions within your Act which which uh, normal people citizens can actually approach the government and say that this has not been provided? Yeah. That's one thing. Okay. And secondly, you said about twenty five data sets. We have a lot of data sets, clean awesome. data sets on awesome. our website. So awesome. please go ahead and uh, download them and work with them and show us. So Amrit Balaji, the data sets that we are talking about is called uh, uh, Accountability Initiative. They are wonderful data from uh, the state of schools and education across India. And so I think we should start pulling that in. Like, okay. Yeah. So I'll connect to Laina Shah. How do we get it to 15 number digits? Uh, no, I, it's not. It's not as you know. I mean, the doc, the NIC recommended that it's a 15 number digit, and uh, I somewhere read that there is some discussion of an 18 number digit. I don't know what the cause is, but but I mean that's the only thing. And again, you know, as I said, you know, there's only so much that I can chew when when we are riding this this wave, right? I mean, one of the things was the grievance interesting thing. Let me let me come to that. Uh, so one of the things that bothered me in the, in the first four consultative, consultative meetings when I sat here is that the provision says that the citizen has to then go back and fill in a specified format for getting compensation with another officer. And it seemed dumb to me, right? You know, you are putting a system that can track the statuses. You know that it's defaulted. Why don't you automatically raise the chalan and you know, do, do the rest of the process? I mean, why do you need the citizen to go back again and fill another form? And claim benefits for for uh, grievances, um, and and but at that point of time it was too much to just open that front and battle with the government. So we said, I understand. Let's talk about the 151 and see how best we can do with it. And luckily, in the last two three weeks, when the government has been talking about uh, uh, you know redressal, they have they have actually been saying that let's automatically issue chalans to the erring officer and then let's take it from there. So that's about it. And please feel free to get in touch with us and we'll be happy to hear from you. And that's, yeah. I'll just take the question. Okay, but, but we can do the transition. Okay, so, uh, my brief interaction with uh, some of the government uh, very limited. Uh, one of the issues that I found was uh, skill levels yeah. of government IT. Yeah. Now, what is the way that you see where? Uh, some of us who have the skills, I mean, how, how, will, how can we actually bridge the skill gap and actually facilitate this generation of numbers? I completely understand. So what we realized is that uh, the government was being taken for a ride by very intelligible NIC consultants who said, the problem is with you, the problem is with this format, that, this, etc. So we actually brought in two very experienced guys from the corporate to drive this. One guy is from Oracle. Very senior guy, and he has very strong inclination to do this. So we brought him into a very open improvement process. Where he was he was selected to be the guy, a very smart guy, and he is now working with the government to interface better with them. Right. So that's one front. The second front is of saying that you know we at CPP are continuously engaged on this. So if you have bandwidth, please come and volunteer, and we can make KGSC better. And the same uh, with uh, the other request of how educational institutions can partner. We we are very open to make this open. I mean, this door was not opened only to Sri Dabhavishya. This door was open to a citizen. And let's make that very powerful. And I think that's that's what we everybody in this room can do. Thank you.